सहना वु सहना भुनक्तु सह वीर करवा वह तेजस्वीनावधीतमस्तु वाविषा वह ओम शांति 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 हरि ओम श्री गुरुभ्यो नम हरि ओम वसुदेवसुत देव कंसचाणूरमर्दनम देवकी परमानंदम कृष्ण वंदे जगद्गु कृष्ण वंदे जगद्गु ओके सो वी आर इन चैप्टर एट भगवद गीता एंड वी वर इन द मिडल ऑफ वर्स फोर्टीन and i was going through um nikhilanand ji's uh, some of the very important points and this is a verse where krishna bhagwan is saying that he is e- easily attainable he is telling arjuna and and to the ever steadfast yogi who constantly remember uh, me uh, satatam constantly and nityashah every day and then i become sulabha so that's what the sulabha means easy to attain Uh, for the nitya yukta sa yogi na the dhyana yogi so there were several different points that we discussed last time and since we met in person we had lot more discussion which was really nice <laughs> you know that's the advantage of meeting in person so um some other points from nikhilanand ji was he mentioned that in patanjali yog sutra also um patanjali ji says that if you do any sadhana continuously then you get established in it so even though in the beginning it might look like uh, hey I'm, i'm not getting anywhere but you keep at it you will get established in it and and uh, what nikhilanand ji was mentioning was interesting he said that if you continuously do that then it's as though in the sleep also it continues you know like some people say no ki sone ke pehle भगवान का ध्यान रखो तो पूरे रात भर वो ही रहता है एंड देन इन द मॉर्निंग यू कैन हैव अगेन डू दैट सो दैट्स अनदर मेथड एंड देन ही वेंट ए वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट पॉइंट ही सेड दिस इज इवन इफ यू डाई दैट साधना विल कंटिन्यू इन द नेक्स्ट लाइफ बिकॉज यू यू हैव दैट हैप यू हैव क्रिएटेड दैट हैबिट ऑफ डूइंग इट दैट्स वाई यू नो यू कैरी ऑल द स्पिरिचुअल स्टफ फ्रॉम योर प्रीवियस लाइफ सो दैट्स अनदर रीजन दैट इट शुड बी सततम एंड नित्य शाह बिकॉज we don't know when we'll kick the bucket so we'll carry it in the future life and so even if we don't gain the highest you will be on the right path you know that's that's the what's the main point in the future lifetimes also so and then um another important thing he said that when they talk about you know remember me constantly and and every day you have to do with you have to develop that love and faith you know don't do it just mechanically because mechanically might help we were talking about it it will help it you know purify your mind to a certain extent it will put you on the path eventually we have to develop that love and faith if we want to take a larger leap in it and um so and he said that we should not be uh, constantly complaining and with negative feelings and because some sometimes we have a habit oh why god why did you do do this to me you are so unfair <laughs> why does all these bad things happen and all you know none of that that's all the whole thing is a karmic cycle you have to just accept it so and but he also mentioned something very interesting and i think everybody kind of in this class probably already heard it and knows about it that is in, in the bhakti literature they they say agar bhagwan ko tum negatively bhi karoge na yaad every day to bhi tumhara kalyan ho jayega and those those um, evidence are there in our in our scriptures and puranas and all that that hey there was this kans tha fir uh, ravan यू नो दे उन्होंने दुश्मनी मोल ले ली बट उनके माइंड में हमेशा भगवान ही थे नेगेटिव <laughs> भी थे और उनको भी मोक्ष मिल गया ओके बट वी डोंट वॉन्ट गो दैट पैथ इट्स अ वेरी पेनफुल पैथ सो जस्ट एनी वे जस्ट टू ब्रिंग दैट ऑफ दैट इवन दैट हैप्स बिकॉज ही वॉज जस्ट सेंग दैट द एग्जाम्पल वर्ल्डली एग्जाम्पल ही गे निखिलानंद जी दैट इफ यू नो वेदर यू लाइक फायर और नॉट इफ यू गेट क्लोजर टू इट यू गो गेट हीट you know whether whether you sit with negative feeling or positive you are going to get heat from it so that's how it is so 
and then the word sulabha that it's called easily attainable whoever does this satatam and nityasha is i am easily attainable otherwise he said you know uh, god realization is a lot more harder uh because in you know, a path of yoga and gyan you know gyan mein kitna kuch karna padta hai you know you you require a lot of special qualification you know for for this but um you need enough enough will power you know to get there and all that and uh, to do tapas and all that in the path of uh, yoga and gyan but this uh, divine re- remembrance very easy that's why i call it sulabha so some people look at it this interpreted this way also and then he was mentioning that you know it's a law of nature that whatever we think about we go towards that you know we lean towards that first is thinking and then we do it so that's why that remembrance is so important um and so if we remember god uh, satatam and nityasha constantly and every day then we will move towards him and then the word nitya yuktasya is one who is constantly connected dhyana yogi remembers and he is the one who is going to get kind of highest and what does that mean one more time to just remember what it means is he is well tuned to bhagwan you know in the correct way completely tuned and we have to go back to that verse 9 kavim puranam you know anushasitaram all those eight points and um, so this is basically is like one of the easiest path according to nikhilanand ji in bhagavad gita and with out of his compassion and kindness krishna bhagwan is mentioning this path it's a very sweet path and and then one more thing that we probably always forget that when, as our uh, understanding gets deeper about you know who god is you will realize that you are actually remembering yourself only self with that capital s <laughs> okay so you are you are getting to know yourself you are getting tuned with your own self who am i you know there are so many ways of approaching this and is saying the more you get tuned to yourself the more you will get joy peace fulfillment all those things will start coming and uh, so he gave an example he say it's like coming back home <laughs> you know you know so many of us travel all around the world and we are having so much fun but a point comes you say enough is enough you know and mira ji is shaking her head because she goes a lot so after a while you say oh, chalo abhi ghar chalte hain bahut ho gaya chalo you know and then we and the, just the thought of going back home at that moment start giving you pleasure my own bed my own khana my own this thing you know i'm going back home so um so the more more we move towards home more better we feel and then say ha pahunch gaye ghar you know jaise ghar pahunchte hain relief so he's saying the same way chanting bhagwan's name you know and remembering him is like going back home because when we are roaming in the sansar so so many lifetime now it's time to go back home and that's why chinmay anand ji said hari home we were talked about that <laughs> by chanting hari om you hari home h u r r y h o m e <laughs> so that's that was nikhilan and ji's points and now we can if anybody has any question about these this words or any comment or anybody wants to add anything so we can read swami ji's commentary he's going to you know tell some very important points any volunteers to read who has not read before Okay, Mira Ji, you are on. If you are up to it. Yes, yes, absolutely. Mm-hmm. I am easily attainable by that ever steadfast yogi who constantly remembers me daily, not thinking of anything else. O Parth, to the one who is ever steadfast in the life divine and remembers me, the self. always and daily with a mind unshattered to him the self is easily attainable the statements in the previous stanzas are all again summarized here in a more emphatic and direct language so you can see that krishna bhagwan the message is the same 
इट जस्ट टेक्स डिफरेंट अप्रोचेस जो भी आपको अच्छा लगता हो वो ले लो यू नो दैट्स वॉट इट इज बट यहाँ पर एकदम डायरेक्ट ढंग से उन्होंने बोल दिया कोई देर इज नो रूम फॉर एनी थिंग एल्स यू नो यू नो सतम एंड एंड नित्य शाह दो टू इम्पॉर्टेंट वर्ड्स and ever steadfast meditator is the one who does not allow his mind its full freedom to run amok among the violence of sensuality such a meditator alone who constantly keeps in himself the awareness of the self is indicated here as the successful practitioner this statement belies the general belief that meditation for an hour or so at the dawn and for an equal length of time at night is all the spiritual duty of a meditator many a time the singer of the gita has indicated his displeasure with the concept of a mere sunday religion so we we are discuss about that no no ki khali ek ghanta kuch kar liya ho mera spiritual thing ho gaya no it is 24/7 but of course you need to do that practice for one hour then bring all that positive thing into the rest of it and then i think there is one more drishtan that i like it a lot and i don't know i have discussed it but there are a lot of new people and maybe you have heard maybe you have not heard is saying that hum log bhagwan ko mandir mein band karke rakhte hai na so so one time bhagwan came out of the mandir and chauraye pe khade ho gaye तो सबने बोला अरे आ, आप कैसे आ गए यहाँ पे अभी आप तो मंदिर में जाइए वापस बिकॉज जो भी मंदिर में जाके मत्था टेकते थे वो चौराहे पे जाके झूठ बोल रहे हैं यू नो दे आर हर्टिंग अदर पीपल वट एवर यू नो मन सर एंड भगवान बोला नहीं नहीं मैं आप लोगों के बीच रहना चाहता हूँ तो दे सर नहीं 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 नहीं, नहीं आप वहाँ जाइए हम आपकी पूजा वूजा सब वहीं उधर ही करेंगे इधर मत आइए सो दैट्स वॉट इट इज दैट वी जस्ट वॉन्ट गॉड यू नो जस्ट फॉर एन आवर हेयर जो पूजा वूजा कर ली बाकी यू नो आप अपने घर में रहो समथिंग लाइक दैट वी हैव टू हैव इट ट्वेंटी फोर सेवन इन हिंदुइजम ऑल्सो दिस लिमिटेड कॉन्सेप्शन ऑफ रिलीजन एज अ फ्राइडे प्रेयर हैज कम टू बी एक्सेप्टेड एंड दे बिलीव दैट इट वुड ब्रिंक अबाउट द नेसेसरी कल्चरल एडिफिकेशन एंड स्पिरिचुअल ग्रोथ This false belief is foreign to our inimitable tradition. Religion in its real sense does not preach a part-time behavior on the part of the devotees. No doubt intense and single-pointed self-application in prayer, worship or meditation is necessary once or twice a day. But the rest of the time also the devotee cannot afford to sink into the depths of moral depravity and expect vaguely that with the prayer he has cleansed himself so i mean as crystal clear krishna i mean uh, swami ji's commentary that you know sunday religion or friday prayer or somebody might do some upvas or something and you cannot say that that's it and i'm done no it has to be the whole time and of course that he is not undermining that whatever we do on sunday or once a week or every day for an hour two hours whatever half an hour he is saying that that's also very very important to give that but then you cannot neglect the rest of the time it has to definitely continue so as crystal clear as possible he has mentioned it prayer is no deity to be sprayed now and then <laughs> nor should the divine altar be considered as a bathroom where when under where one enters dirty and walks out clean here krishna is very careful to insist with all the strength and emphasis that he can command that the divine consciousness must be maintained by the seeker constantly and continuously all through the day daily so we had discussed right ki ganga mein na, na, nahane se paap dhul jate hain and then they said no no paap nahi dhulte paap you know jab naha rahe hote hain to wo ped pe chad jate hain fir jab naha lo bahar aa jao to kood jate hain tumhare par <laughs> basically you know that is only to inspire us not to do something in the future but it's and then he yahan par likha hai unhone ye purani wali book mein prayer is not a insect in insect side <laughs> 
to be sprayed now and <laughs> because that's what people use it for you know are sab gadbad karke chalo ye havan kar lo sab dhul jayega kuch nahi hone wala you know it's very clear about that this is not a place for this bhagavad gita is not a place for these kind of things hmm. to such an individual i am easily attainable o arjuna this positive assertion has got a very important significance in as much as it indicates that the negation of these conditions will not be conducive even to hope for an easy success in meditation i mean he said so clearly that even success bhi nahi milega tumko agar agar if we don't try this so i think the way we have to look at it we don't have to get dejected oh my god it's like what are the things we have to adjust in that's what the main thing first find out hey or, or learn who god is really it's not just in the murti it's not just in the mandir but he's everywhere all those things we have the more deeper it goes sinks into us the more chance of we remembering god in the correct manner or having attention on god or not getting disturbed by the worldly things you know the more so that's how we have to look at it we have to go backwards in this because you know other, otherwise we will say oh my god i i don't remember him all the time so i'm doomed there nothing like that but he's just telling you this is the goal and and that's how you should work towards it any question why should on? oh the connecting line is yeah. why should one struggle so hard to realize the self listen and then we go to the next yes yeah so any comment question anybody want to add anything to this verse okay so it looks like everybody is fully satisfied no argument with krishna bhagwan or swami ji's commentary okay in that case so let's move forward now so krishna bhagwan knows arjun's mind huh? that hey he, he's like us mujhe kya milega <laughs> मैं ये सब हंगामा करूँ यू नो आई आई पुट सो मच एफर्ट एंड आई ट्राई टू अंडरस्टैंड हू भगवान इज एंड देन आई आई सतताम एंड नित्य शाह एंड ऑल दैट हे वट एम आई गन गेट सो कृष्ण भगवान से डोंट वरी आई टेल यू वट यू गेट दस द नेक्स्ट वर्ष मामु पेत पुनर्जन्म दुखालय शाश्वत नापनुवती महात्मा संसिधि पर गु मी उपेत्य हैविंग अटेन सो कृष्ण भगवान सिंह अटेनिंग मी यर कृष्ण भगवान अगेन नॉट द बॉडी बट इज टॉकिंग अबाउट दैट ब्राह्मण पुनः अगेन जन्म बर्थ दुखालय न दिस लॉट ऑफ पीपल कोट दिस दिस इज अ वेरी वेरी powerful verse in bhagavad gita ki this world is a dukhale and you know it it's more like a an analysis of this world because we don't need to get totally dejected oh my god dukhale kahan ke phas gaye and all that but the nature is such ki if you look at uh, try to get happiness from this world you're not going to get it that's what it basically means but this world ko dukhale bola hai house of place of pain अ शाश्वतम दिस वॉज अ वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट वर्ड शाश्वत मीन्स इटर्नल जो हमेशा रहता है एंड अशाश्वतम नॉन इटर्नल सो दिस वर्ल्ड इज दुखल एन इटर्नल न इज नॉट आपनुवंती गेट महात्मा न द ग्रेट सोल्स सम सिद्धिम टू परफेक्शन द ग्रेट सोल रिसीव दैट सम सिद्धि परफेक्शन परमाम हाइएस्ट परफेक्शन गता हैविंग रीच दैट प्लेस सो What are what is he saying over here? So let's do this one. Yeah, I told him. So, Bhagwan talked about all the previous verses. You know how to chant Om and you know remember Him. And when we saw the pre- this verse fourteen also everything. Uh, so, what is so special about this Param Gati? They call it Param Gati, Moksha, Freedom. You know whatever you want to call. So many names are there. You know, Nirvan. so bhagwan says that the one who attains me so the word is mam upetya the ultimate goal paramam gati so means the one who identifies with me you don't get punar janma you know 
पुनर्जन्म न आपनुवंती यू डू नॉट गेट पुनर्जन्म सो व्हाट डज ही मीन देयर आर बोथ द थिंग्स आर देयर द वन इज यू एक्चुअली विल नॉट बी बर्थ और डेथ के साइकिल से बाहर निकल जाओगे तुम एंड देयर इज अ वेरी फेमस भज गोविंदम लॉर्ड ऑफ यू माइट नो बाय शंकराचार्य जी एंड द लाइन इज वेरी फेमस सब लोग कोट करते हो लाइन को पुनरपि जननम पुनरपि मरणम पुनरपि जननी जठरे शयनम सो यू नो ये दैट इज द साइकल कि यू नो हैंगिंग इन द मदर्स वूम यू नो इट साउंड क्रूड बट दैट्स द ट्रूथ दैट जन्म लेने के लिए वो सब हम लोग को कितना सहना पड़ता है चाहे को वेदर इट्स एनिमल योनी और और ह्यूमन योनी यू नो यू हैव टू बी इन दैट कन्फाइंड स्पेस एंड ऑल एनी वे सो द होल साइकल ऑफ ट्रांस माइग्रेशन दे कॉल इट इन इंग्लिश दैट कम्स टू एन एंड यू नो and uh, so he was nikhilana ji was bringing some, just some points that you know when we have taken the human birth you know there are some short time when things are going conducive in our life and all that and then we feel oh very very nice and all that but you know when we when we die we don't know that whether we are going to be born as a human being or whatever and and the next life may not be as conducive suppose if this life is great for me and i feel very happy i don't know what's going to happen next time why to leave that open that possibility you know so th- these are some contemplative point and um and because there are constantly sorrow and pain in different different lifestyle of different kinds you know humans have one kind animals have another issue you know wo bechare yahi sochte rehte hain ki mujhe khane ko kahan milega koi mujhe maar na de they live in fear of all that and we live in all other kind of fear fear of war and you know we don't know whatever is happening it's just so many things so here bhagwan is giving a, a like a story of everybody's life because he is calling this sansar dukhale and ashashvatam dukhale means a board of sorrow you know so little bit of joy in between of course and again sorrow pain trouble you know so so he was just saying nikhilanand ji is very funny he's saying that we have we have learned this from the western culture you know that we are walking and you just ask somebody how are you <laughs> you know good morning how are you and then you you most of the time you don't wait to hear <laughs> you just walk away and the person is fine i'm fine you say ki agar ruk gaye galti se aur ek do baar aur puch liya how are you doing chalu ho jayega sorry bad story <laughs> you know? so he was just saying that the he apne bare mein keh rahe the nikhilanand ji is because you know when people are kind of uh, head of these big centers sare log ja ke unka apna dukhda hone ke paas rote hain you know so he was just saying that people come and tell all kind of sad stories so he was just kidding he saying mere ko aur bhi vairagya ho jata hai <laughs> these guys have, you know that they can the vairagya which is joking so he saying that sometimes he said outwardly people look so great you know they look like they are well they have health they have everything you know but he saying that the moment they sit down with me you know and and he say i might think that they are an embodiment of joy you know but the moment you sit down with me they will say oh swami ji kya bataye and then they will start and they 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 want to go from the beginning and they want to go in a complete detail just <laughs> swami is ko koi aur kaam hi nahi ho so i was just thinking about the social media right now you know like uh, uh, my my son was t- uh, talking to me and he saying mom if you go to all these social media it looks like everybody is having a great time you know celebrations ho rahe hain vacations ho rahe hain na uh, you know and then the people who are you know teenagers or who are very kind of impressionable people and they don't know then there's a meri life khari kharab hai meri parents kharab hai <laughs> meri इतना बाकी तो सब इतना मजा कर रहे हैं इट्स अ फॉल्स थिंग इट्स अ कम्प्लीटली फॉल्स थिंग यू नो द मोमेंट वी आर थ्रोन ऑन दिस अर्थ वी हैव बोथ द थिंग्स गोइंग इट्स अ ड्यूअलिटी हैप्पीनेस सैडनेस सो इफ समबडी प्रोजेक्ट्स दैट एवरीथिंग इज ग्रेट इदर दे आर लाइंग और दे आर इन सम काइंड ऑफ डिल्यूजन और इट्स जस्ट अ फॉल्स प्रिटेंस यू नो सो द ट्रूथ इज इट इज अ दुखाल है सो ही सेइंग दैट इवन बुद्धा बुद्धा डिड डिस्कस गॉड but he definitely talked about he said sarvam dukham dukham sarva sarvam shanikam shanikam everything is moment by moment changing and everything is dukh and dukh and his whole 
thing is based on his philosophy is based on how to come out of this dukkha that's what his whole buddhism is based on so th- those two I words i'm going to interrupt here sorry is yes. it okay yeah if it is something small yeah we can otherwise we can take it but on the end go ahead if it's related to this buddha buddha when he start thinking all the miseries is coming from outside so he started saying aham brahmasmi basically start focusing on the issue this whatever you see the tragedy what it is all you see it inside you close your eyes nothing is once you close your eyes so whatever is happening pleasure displeasure it happens within you so god is not outside you it is within you yeah the reason i said that Next. because the difference between vedanta and buddhism is that buddha was silent on the topic of god he never discussed he didn't deny it he did not say god is there but in vedanta the you know god or brahman or or uh, you know whatever you want to call it ishwara uska existence bahut thok baja ke bola gaya hai magar let me make a point here maybe i'm wrong my i'm not knowledge what what vedanta says a gore beosh te gore beo gore gore tari bachcha sarvat sharva sarbayo namaste rudrope beyo if you extrapolate from here that the lord says you alone transfer yourself into all forms into the forms of the power of rudra as agora the enlightening and upliftment energy that is goratri the frightful darkening energy which pushes one down and gora the energy which pushes one fixed neither rising nor falling these forms embodied in rudra shiva are again he slashes their shiva with something maybe the god or helpful to aspirants while they are aware and frightful for the ones who are ignorant and pushing them down and down that is where buddha's philosophy comes aham brahmasmi and i don't think if you go dive deep in the vedanta and the buddha they are not different no no they are not different at all see one of the great things about vedanta is it encompasses everything so we are not saying that buddha is uh, something different in fact buddha comes under the 24 avatar anyway and we have discussed in our class that uh, one second my Uh, this thing is about to die i forgot to put the battery on in my computer let me put this for you yeah so so yeah you know let's focus on bhagavad gita we, we don't have any Sorry. denial so basically what it is is that everybody approaches um this you know whole world and us and god and question in different ways and and uh, bhagavad gita ka beauty hai ki it encompasses everything the reason i i brought buddha in because it was it was a, a point brought by nikhila nanji that he also mentioned the same concept that bhagavad gita mein hai ki dukha le a lot of people quote this so that's what it is okay and a shashvatam it means um, sorry let's go to dukha le so it's a very a board of sorrow over here so then how do we look at it from the our perspective so he's saying that we know that we are physically in this life we are physically confined to this body right and we are kind of um, i i hate to call it like a prison because how so negative but hum log isme band hai is is body mein right because yahi se hamara sara operation chal raha hai and what is body made up of matter and what is the hallmark of matter constantly changing you know it is a perishable thing so it's a machine which is constant and what what kind of machine machine that is constantly working from the day we are born until day we die this machine does not get a rest koi bolega ki sleep mein hum log ko rest mil raha hai we are in complete delusion because the sari pachan kriya or blood or heart is still beating hamara connection chut gaya lekin body to chal rahi hai na so matlab imagine ye machine ke sath so um something or the other keeps happening in our body constantly and you know nikhila nanji was joking you know he's from delhi so he was talking about delhi ki traffic you know here we can call it la ki traffic la you think that la ki traffic jada hai abhi body mein traffic dekho 
क्या क्या कुछ ना कुछ चल ही रहा है कॉन्स्टेंट ब्लड सर्कुलेशन ऑक्सीजन का आदान प्रदान हो रहा है यू नो सो मेनी थिंग्स आर हैपनिंग एंड ऑल द ऑर्गन्स आर वर्किंग विगरसली ही सेड यू नो एंड एंड ही सेंग ही वॉज जोकिंग ही सेड यू मे इट वन लड्डू एंड यू फील वेरी गुड लेकिन बॉडी को क्या क्या झेलना पड़ता है उसको डाइजेस्ट करने के लिए उसको पूछो <laughs> सारे ऑर्गन स्ट्रगल कर रहे हैं उसको डाइजेस्ट करने के लिए यू नो नॉन स्टॉप चल रहा है वेन वी आर स्लीप ऑल्सो सो बेसिकली क्या है कि यू नेवर नो इस मशीन में कब और कैसे कुछ गड़बड़ हो जाए एंड एट एज अवर ओल्ड एज नो बडी नीज टू टेल नो बडी नोज कि क्या हो जाए इसमें so basically as we grow old there so he's saying that another he's very funny he said when you grow old then you know ki how many joints are there in the body because pehle the dhyan bhi nahi hota kuch he said young kid don't know that but older people ko puchho unko sare mal joints malum hai because sare dukh rahe and then he he said this was so funny because i could identify with this he said if we sit we cannot stand and if we stand we cannot sit <laughs> you know when even when i'm doing my yoga or something i sit down in in like you know sukhasana and after sitting 20 minutes or something oh my god when i get up uh, it's like oh it's so hard so and the, the, this is one aspect of it he was saying no dukhale and the other aspect is through this body only we are connected to the family property and everything around and people around that and we nobody needs to tell each other what can go wrong there okay so many issues can keep because dukhale ki baat hota the full of different kind of sorrows you know and then the famous classification in vedanta that everybody must have heard there are three different kind of sorrows so he brought that up adi devik adi bhautik and adhyatmik you know aur adi devik is जिस जिस पे जो नेचर से शुरू होता है कुछ कंट्रोल नहीं है तुम्हारा कोई अर्थवेक आ गया फ्लडिंग हो गई आई वुड से दैट इवन दिस व्हाट यू कॉल अपना कोविड आल्सो यू नो सारे साइंटिस्ट थक गए सबकी अलग अलग दस थियरीज है किसी को पता नहीं क्यों हुआ क्या हुआ यू नो कॉन्स्पिरसी थियोरी से लेके यू नो नेचर सो बेसिकली आदि दैविक एंड देन आदि भौतिक मीन्स इन माई सराउंडिंग्स में से कुछ भी हो सकता है you know my neighbor is troubling me dog is barking government is doing this god knows all the friends are troubling me the relatives all the adi bhati and then third kind is hey all wo sab shant hai kuch mera hi gadbad ho raha hai through either my body or my mind so that's called adhyatmik you know from my body or mind or my past sanskars I don't know what sanskaras I have brought from my previous life, and they might start giving me trouble. Certain bad habit or you know certain sanskaras are which are negative, but just pop, prop any time in my mind and start giving me trouble. So there are these are the different kind of troubles. So um, even though, if you go back to the basics of Vedanta, that we are very embodiment of joy and peace. So don't get so dejected. We are, but. the reason we constantly experience this sorrow pain and sense of limitation is because of the identification with our body we forget that's where the remembrance comes in hey remember you know so and the other aspect of dukkhal i mean uh, this sansar is one is dukkhal ashashvatam that is saying that it is non eternal it's going to end so it's saying just think about this even if you reach struggle to get things firstly to get anything in this world it's not easy koi ek cheez hamare paas bahut paisa bhi ho aur kuch kharidna ho to kitna usme khatpat lagta hai right jaake pata karo ek car kharidni ho to ya america mein to uska bhi ek electric lu ya dusri lu aur fir ek pata nahi hazar model anyway that's a very simple one but to get other things also success and this and that how much we have to struggle and we, we may achieve achieve the highest okay the moment we achieve it start perishing you know for example okay the become the guy became president he knows in four years he, four years is out he have to re get reelected you know highest ke baad bhi wo perish shuru ho jata hai that's the nature you know the, because the result the whole nature is like that of of this world so um basically anything goes up will come down you know so 
in body wise the scientists tell you that cells are constantly dying you know so where is this death finitude and all ashashvatam is coming from that's what he was analyzing you know and um so basically the what he's saying you will get out of this so you have to look at it both ways ek to janam maran se mukti mil jayegi aur tumko jeevan mukti bhi mil sakti hai like you will not get affected by this change that that is happening but that just the body if you realize you are not the body it won't affect you you know that's what he's talking about so these he's talking about these mahatmans you know the ones the great souls who reach that highest wo ye punar janma se chhut jate hain okay and then so now in the next uh, verse he's going to talk about the different lokas are also uh, na- nashwar means somebody might think ki main itne sab punya karke main swarg mein pahunch jaungi swarg is also temporary up to the brahma lok everything is temporary that's what he's going to say so even if you have a great life you do a lot of tapas you do this and but if you just want a finite result and you want swarg and some other lokas udhar bhi kuch mari dal galne wali nahi hai because that's also a shashvatam not eternal so that's what he's reminding us about this any question comment anybody wants to add anything to this dukhale <laughs> i know <laughs> i see meena ji shaking her head is like oh my god <laughs> okay who would like to read swami ji's commentary I'm sorry. Who said that? Okay, here, Sushil Ji. Having attained me, these Mahatmas, great souls, do not again take birth, which is the house of pain and is non-eternal. They having reached the highest perfection. moksha to any practical minded man of the world as arjuna was at this juncture of the discourse an ardent doubt can arise in his prophet hunting mental estimation of what he has heard no action is undertaken by any man of success in the world without considering the amount of strife that he has to put in put into his field of activity and the possible profit that he can reasonably expect from it with such a calculating intellect if one has so far listened to the discourse it is natural that he should inquire what exactly would be the benefit that would be accruing to one who through constant and daily remembrance of self attains selfhood so basically just saying that we all are like asking you know mere ko kya milega and obviously we have this calculating intellect and arjun was in the same position and you know that's why in our um, you know culture and shastras asking question is totally allowed because you you don't need to believe anybody just because somebody is saying it to you you got to intellectually be convict you know con- uh, what should i say have a conviction you know have believe in it that hey this is what it is and that's why without clearing the doubt it can never happen if the doubts are lingering we will never believe in it because we'll always have so that's what he's saying and krishna bhagwan throughout gita has given reason why arjun should do what he should do simple and in the end he gave him a complete freedom is mai tujhe sab kuch bata diya hai ki ye karega to ye hoga ye karega to ye hoga ab teri marzi tu ja ke kar jo tujhe acha lagta hai you know so there is no compulsion of any kind over here yes teji what you told at then that is the crux of the gita that what what krishna bhagwan says be a seeker not a follower i gave you everything now it is up to you you want to see go ahead don't be a follower that is the beauty about the hindu religion the hindu religion never promotes people to be a follower yep. be a seeker if you are in the cell of get this convince it you don't need to go here and there to look for a god 
Yeah, everything inside. Everything is, uh, yeah, every, everything, whole universe is inside. That is what Krishna leaves him at the end, Arjuna. Now, okay, now you have to all knowledge, you have all information. Do whatever you want to do it. Correct. So, he, so giving us a freedom, I, yes. If I understood, he clearly says you have to be a seeker. You have to keep on seeking, seeking, seeking. Don't be, you heard something, I want to follow it. Because he gives them an example. Uh, not in in the Gita, I heard an example of what it means. It says, in the daylight, we all people can see everything. But the owl cannot see. Now, if we follow that the light gives you power to resolve the things, that is not true for the owl. He cannot see in the night, in the day. He can see in the night only. So be a seeker. What you can see, go to, go to the next step of seeking. I think that is what Gita is considered one of the highest form of philosophy. Good. And, uh, Thank and you. What you told and what uh, uh, Lord Krishna tells to the Arjuna. Those are the, uh, what, if you are a Muslim, you say those are the prophetic words. <laughs> but, <laughs> something unique. Okay, Thanks. let's go move forward. Yes, thank you. Hmm. Okay, Sushilji. Estimating the benefit enjoyed by a man of perfection through the realization of the self, it is said that having attained me, the high souled ones of no more subject would be birth. To the philosophically thoughtful, re to the philosophically thoughtful, Rebirth is the starting point of all pains and Im imperfections. Krishna also says in the, in the verse that rebirth is the house of pain and the eph 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 ephemeral. Yeah, ephemeral is the temporary. So, so here, you know, he's, he's going to, uh, Swami is going to analyze what it means, rebirth and birth, because it has a lot more philosophical tone to it, not just physical uh, birth and rebirth, but you know, other things. And also from a human perspective, you know, the moment the birth starts, all those pains and problems start. And, you know, because I listened to a lot of this NDE uh, people who, who had this near death experience, when they temporarily go in their realm and then have to come back, you know, to the body, all of them across the board, the same freedom, you know, no, अगर कितना भी pain हो रहा हो इस body में किसी किसी की body तो एकदम जर्जर हो जाती है like with disease or accident or something but in that realm it's just there's no pain no none of this and there is a complete harmony oneness beauty everybody getting along with everybody you know it's it's like a no no complaints <laughs> it's like hard for us to imagine that that thing but it, whatever Krishna Bhagavan is saying, it matches. That's the evidence that these people bring out, you know. So here he's saying that with this body, when we take birth, that's when it becomes, you know, um, temporary and full of pain. And let's see how he explains it. Next, next paragraph. In the history of thoughts in the Upanishads, it is quite interesting to note how the goal of life, which was considered in the beginning, as the state of deathlessness, Amrat Tattva, came to be reckoned later on as the absence of rebirth, Napunarjanma. In the beginning, the anxiety of the seeker was to end the unavoidable and the most horrid of all experiences called death. As knowledge increases through the right evaluation of the happenings in life, it soon became clear to the subjective research scholars, the rishis, that death had really no sting all but had no sting at all for those who had understood that it's nothing but one of the different experiences in life. Death can in no way clip off continuity of existence. Those relentless thinkers had in the logic of their thoughts, come to the conclusion that the birth was the beginning of all pains, and therefore the goal of life, if at all was, if at all it was possible to achieve, should be the state of no rebirth. So he's just saying that in an ordinary human's life, if we don't know anything better, 
then death is the most horrible thing. You know, that, but once you come to know that, hey, the, the, by somebody dying, physical death is empty, but eternity, the soul is always going to be there and things like that. So anyway, he's just kind of philosophically um, analyzing that when they talked about Amrutatvam, they also talked about deathlessness. And the, another way you can look at it in other parts, uh, Swamiji has commented that the world of change is called, you know, death of thing. And, and we face death, not only just at the end of the physical death, we face death every day. You know, the cells are dying, things are changing, everything, it, it, it's in flux. That is almost like a death thing. You know, so if you go up and up, you are in Amruta. And Amrut word also is, in Sanskrit is, Mrit is death, Amrit, which is not Right? Even that word has science, scientific thing in there. The thing of rebirth and its destinies belong to the delusory ego, ego which is nothing but the unborn which is nothing but the unborn self identifying with its illusory matter envelopments. Electricity conditioned by the bulb is the light. When the bulb gets broken, the light, which is in effect, merges with its cause. The current, let me read that again. Electricity conditioned by the bulb is the light. When the bulb gets broken, the light, which is an, an effect, merges with its cause, the current, one without the second, everywhere the same, illuminating all the bulbs in the world. Similarly, the self-conditioned by human mind and intellect is the ego, jiva, which suffers rebirth, the agonies of imperfections, the disease, the decay, and the death. The ego comes to re rediscover that it is nothing other than the self once the mind and intellect equipment has been stilled. You know, Swamiji's sentences are very long, so sometimes it's, you get confused while reading it. Basically, he's just giving an example of uh, the bulbs and the electricity. That the electricity is flowing through the bulb and the bulb is illuminating. The bulb is compared to our body. You know, that the consciousness is, is expressing through us but when, when the bulb gets broken, as though the electricity is merged back into itself. <laughs> okay. We don't think about it that way. Abhi mera bulb toot gaya yaan se, but kya ho hai? Electricity cannot pass through it because it's not the conducive for, for it to express. But where, what happened to that electricity? It just become the rest of the part of electricity. Electricity is one. Like somebody was saying, there is no such thing as Chinese electricity and Indian electricity and American. You know, at, at the core of it, electricity is the same. So he's just giving that example to make us understand that that the rebirth or getting, uh, sorry, taking birth and dying that belongs to ego. You know, ego is the one who wants to keep alive. So you have to take another birth and it, it does not belong to the Brahman, you know, so this, that's why when you get established in Brahman, that's when you get, reach that deathless, um, uh, you are in that deathless realm and it can happen while you are alive also. That's why we have these people who are like uh, saints and sages, they don't fear death and some of them, you know, I mean, they are Trikal Darshi and all they know when to leave and how to leave. And I was recently reading about Yoganandji. Yoganandji left in the meditative place, position, his body. You know, he, he gave this lecture, the last one, and then he left his body. So, you know, because no fear, no nothing about it. And that whole famous story about Parikshit also, that he, when he found out he has seven days to live, then, you know, he... he uh, listened to the whole Bhagavatam and he had no fear of death. And then he just sat and he said, oh, come, the snake, please come and bite me. I'm ready to go. <laughs> you know? So that's what it is. Yeah. The one who thus experiences itself as his own real nature 
realizes that he has never any relationship at all with the equipment of feeling and understanding. Just as an awakened man has no more relationship with his own dream wife and children, the ego comes to an end, is match, the Ma ego comes to end, is march through the thorny path of pain and finish you. When it gets awakened to the spiritual cognition of the self, such great souls will no more have any need to manifest in the plane of plurality to get broken with the repeated lashes of sorrows and miseries lived. So I think this is a little bit hard for us to accept this because we look at the dream and we say, you know, dream is dream, but this is real life. But to the saints and sages, this life is like a dream. <laughs> you know, if we can understand. Our teacher used to say, God created dreams in our head to give us a clue. <laughs> okay. that And this is a fact, what he said, that dream may kuch bhi ho raho. I can, you know, koi single admi hai, uski shadi bhi ho gai, bachche bhi ho gai. When he wakes up, where is the wife and kids? They're not there. You know, anyway. So basically, he's just saying that once you awaken to the higher, then you, these things don't mean anything. You know, he will still live and he will still try to help everybody and all that. But he doesn't give so much importance to it, so much reality to it like we do. We get, we give too much reality to it. He who has, through the process of constant contemplation of the self, and who has, during his lifetime, learned to control all the senses, to regulate the mind and the heart, to control and to arrest all pranas in the intellect, he comes to directly identify himself with the infinite and the eternal, and shall no more come back into any limited embodiment to continue his futile search for an infinite satisfaction among the finite world of objects. So Swami Ji has pura summarized kar diya is, <laughs> is paragraph. Mein. You know, the last five verses ko summarized kar diya, you know. Constant contemplation of the self during the lifetime, learn to control the senses, regulate the mind and the heart, all that, you know, and arrest all pranas in the intellect. That person can experience that infinite he's talking about and eternal and then once you learn i mean once you get established in it that's when this finite world is not going to be affecting you you know and and the worldly example is that once you learn uh, alphabets and you learn a language you cannot be illiterate <laughs> you know if somebody brings you know a book and it's a it, you know, you will read it. You cannot go back to it. Once you get educated, you cannot behave like un, uneducated. That's, that's the, so once these people experience that, they know that's the truth, then the other things do not affect them. Very hard for us to connect, but these are Krishna Bhagwan's words. Any question, comment? We have five minutes. Anybody want to add anything? These are very powerful verses, aren't they? Especially this last two. Umaji, can we, I mean, I'm just having a little bit hesitant about the, about this paragraph, the dream of the rebirth. Okay, that's <laughs> the paragraph. Okay. And then when it says that, um, it merges back when they talk about this bulb and the, uh, when the bulb breaks. Okay, what is it telling me to the when the bulb breaks? Is it my going away or is it my ego going away? That's what Bo I you can say both ways because whenever they talk about death, we can take it both ways. Because you know, sometimes when we were doing our study group, uh, we were like, hey, what exactly is this moksha? Okay. And even after you leave the body, okay, you don't come back, then what happens to me? Right? That, that, that's one question that comes. So, so our teacher used to explain that, you know, the, when the body dies, what happens? Think about it scientifically also. There are five elements it's made up of. 
it it's goes back to the ele ele element yes. you know the yes. the air uh, whatever is in the body merges with the air mm. you know what a mitti jo hai mitti mein chali gayi and, and so on and so forth fire fire element mein the same mm. way when when somebody gets the moksha what happens to their subtle body it becomes a total mind you know right okay so yeah. it's gone back to its totality to the yes. vinegar Yes. So the people who are living uh, Jivan Mukta as though th they are merged. They may not have physically merged yet, but it, because it doesn't affect them, yes. that's why we call it that it is Jivan Mukti. But then, then real Mukti will happen that when they drop the body, they don't have to come back. You know, they will come back if they want to. They will come back totally as a known. Just like Krishna Bhagwan ne jo avatar liya tha na, Krishna Bhagwan ko malum tha kyu aaye hain, kya kar rahe hain. Or Bhagwat Gita mein bhi unhone bhi bol diya Arjun ko chapter four mein that you don't. We have had many births, you and me both. He didn't even say ki khali tu nee janm liya hai. Lo nee nee. Mujhe hamesha yad hai ki maine kyu liya hai janm. Tujhe yad nahi hai. That's the big difference. Yeah. Oh, uh, Omaji, one question. Um, hmm. Jivan Mukti is the death of ego, isn't it? Yes, Jivan Mukti is death of ego, or you can call it death of ego. You can call it uh, you don't get aff affected by the world. Right. You know the world is also a dream. It's a anitya, whichever way you want to keep it. Just sometime you know, uh, death of ego causes confusion in people's head. What do you mean by that? So that's why maybe some people connect to that other way much better. That you know, I'm not getting affected by anything. Because I, I don't, it is not real or it's temporary. You know, it's like the best example given is that when a, a small baby or a toddler, you know, when the balloon burst, he will start crying. But the adult is not going to cry. He's going to just smile and say, what's a big deal? I'll get you another one. But, but the saints and sages tell us that we don't listen to them. उन्होंने सारी वो कबीर जी ने तो कितने वो दोहे वगैरह बना दिए ये ये संसार यू नो इट्स लाइक अ बबल इट्स गोन अ बर्स्ट एनी टाइम एंड यू नो इट्स सो टेम्पररी ये वो हम लोग को लगता है कि खाली कविता में लिखा ऐसा थोड़ी होता है मगर उनकी दृष्टि से देखो तो ऐसा ही है इफ यू थिंक ऑफ मैनी 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 लाइफ टाइम्स टू गैदर दिस इज लाइक अ वेरी क्षणिक राइट Or I mean, there there are life forms on this earth that we experience every day that have only twenty four hours in their lifetime. In the matchar, matchar, kitna tang karta hai humko. But bichari ki life khali chhobis ghante ki hoti, or whatever you know. I don't know exactly, but um, and even dogs, a lot of people have these days. You know, our next generation, sab kutte billi pal rahe hain. Unke bhi it's like twelve years, fifteen years me. It's finished. So, all these things we can contemplate upon, you know. Any other question, doubt, comment? Anybody wants to add anything? Okay. I can close Bhagavad Gita here. Sarvadharman parityajya mami kam sharanam braja. अहम तापेभ्य मोक्ष ईष्या माशु हरिओं श्री गुरुभ्यो नम हरिओं